Hey everyone, so we are at Computex 2017 at EVGA's headquarters in Taipei, Taiwan. And I'm looking at the new Kingpin card. So this is brand new, this is a 1080 Ti Kingpin. It has been teased on Twitter lately, but we have the actual thing here and they're letting us tear it down as long as I can get it back together properly. We have all the information already on the power components here. I will be able to talk through some of that. Then we'll have a separate video on the PCB and VRM analysis. Before getting to that, this coverage is brought to you by Corsair's new T1 race chair, which is a $350 gaming targeted chair using a bucket style race seat. The chair arms have four directional movement for configuration to your liking, and as a bonus, they use rollerblade wheels. Learn more at the link in the description below. Now we're gonna walk through it. So before taking this thing apart, I wanna point out a couple key features that we'll have more details on in the article linked in the description below if you're interested in following all of it very closely. You can check the article. So let's start out with the heatsink solution. First of all, this is, uh, it's a copper plated, so it's not actually a copper heat sink it's copper plated and in terms of cooling ability that shouldn't really matter it's just like one degree celsius difference between plating and not plating uh, it's paint when it matters not the plating but that's the heat sink the fin setup is kind of similar to ftw3 and sc2 so we've talked about the pin fins they call them before which is something that was introduced with icx so they've got the pin fins which are just cylindrical heat sink uh, fins for more surface area basically it's so a couple of those in there the part that's actually interesting here aside from the usual icx stuff that you see is the heat pipes so the heat pipes on this solution they're running two uh sets of pipes so there's three eight millimeter pipes and three six millimeter pipes and all six of those pipes uh, converge centrally on the GPU, as you would expect. However, in order to fit all of those pipes and actually spread across the uh, cold plate for the GPU, they've got them stacked vertically, which is kind of hard to see, but we'll see it once it's torn down. So the pipes are stacked vertically. That is a patented setup, I'm informed by the heat pipe supplier, uh, and that's supposed to allow for obviously fitting more heat pipes together in a smaller area without having to come out of here, protrude out of the cooling area uh, because once you exit this area of the fans you can no longer really dissipate the heat from those heat pipes efficiently that's part of the problem that the armor had when we looked at it other than that three fan setup here it's connected through mcus they also are uh, using they've replaced one of the mcus with another component which we'll talk about later or in the article at least some meshing for the the shroud but nothing too special there Everything else is, uh, is just going to have to be unveiled as we tear it down. So let's go ahead and do that now and uh, look at the power design once we've got the bare PCB. Okay, so I only have one screwdriver for this. We have a couple screws in the back plate itself. Let's go ahead and take those off first and then move on to the uh, GPU screws, the four main screws, which this driver is a bit small for that, but we'll make do with what we have. This backplate is a monolithic backplate, which really just means that it's one die cast piece. On the ICX cards, they've done two pieces, and that's for, uh, for thermal isolation to some extent, but also just die casting, manufacturing process and cost reasons, logistics, things like that. This one's one piece though, that's for structural support because the front side, the base plate where you actually get your real structural support on these cards is split into two. And we'll look at that in a bit. Splitting the front side into two allows extreme overclockers like Kingpin himself to remove the GPU side of the base plate and mount their liquid nitrogen pot to the GPU, which then uh, means that you're eliminating the one barrier to that process, which is the base plate getting in the way while still being able to keep a base plate on the power components, things that actually need it and might not be cooled by Allen 2 in this instance. This is something of an early model. Keep in mind, it's got some wear and tear on it just from the lab and testing. A lot of thermal pads as usual. These are a bit worn because again, it is a, uh, I believe it's a pre-production model or a very early one anyway. We've split one in half here, but that's okay. It's not like it's going to retail. So we've got on the back side of the, uh, power phase we have a vrm or a thermal pad setup thermal pad backside of the gpu it's kind of interesting coloring i'm not sure if there's any functionality to that you'll notice that there's a gold plated pcb here that's to expose the inner ground layer to the edge of the pcb 
as for uh, how useful that is, we'll have to talk to Buildzoid, but the point here, other than looks, is theoretically actually functional. The gold plating allows them to expose the inner ground layer. Uh, VRAM, cooling as usual, and then the, the name plate with some Captain thermal tape that I'm going to leave alone because it might be just some kind of development debugging thing that you're doing. Actually, in a couple places, the Captain thermal tape. That's the same stuff we use. is actually really good for being both electrically uh, non-conductive and not a huge thermal insulator or conductor either. Okay, we're getting to the point where I'm gonna have to start disconnecting fans and power, and there are a lot of those. So we've got fan here, two fans here, and power over here. There should be a should be a sixth one somewhere. Okay, so we freed the heat sink. Let's remove that. And now we have the PCB, which actually looks really cool with that gold plating on the PCB and the cooler itself. Let's start with the cooler and then we'll talk some of the PCB. Again, full details will be in the article, including all the voltage controllers and things like that. I've got all the numbers, just haven't memorized them yet. So here we've got the copper cold plate, as you'd expect, protrusions for the VRAM cooling, uh, and thermal pads on everything. Now, we asked them, EVGA has thermal pads on things even like the MCUs. The reason they do that uh, is because they just have a hard spec in their requirements that says every component must be 60C or lower, which is absolutely insane, but it also means that no one will ever complain about temperatures on a component that doesn't need to care about temperatures like an MCU. But anyway, that's why all the thermal pads are there even when they don't need to be. The base plate's pretty uh, standard setup except for the split down the middle. So that split is what allows this part to be removed, taken out, and then you can put your LN2 pod on that area of the board while keeping this on the VRM components. You can see the MOSFET and doubler imprints on this thermal pad, which contact to, if we pull this off, you'll see it, to a copper plate as seen on the FTW3 cards, get rid of that pad, copper plate here, and on the other side of that, there might be a heat pipe, but I'm not 100% positive just yet. No, it does not look like there is. There is, however, a copper plate, and the heat pipes all run through. Actually, let me kind of angle it this way. You can see the plate here, and then under that, there is this copper plate, which is contacting between this one and the base plate. That sinks to the fins, which of course connects to the heat pipes. So there's your cooling solution uh, on that part of the card. I'm not sure we're gonna go ahead and take the rest of this off because there's really no need to and it gets very complex with the fan cables. We don't have time to try and figure out where everything goes, but we can move along to this part. And this we will have some photos and B-roll of. So for this, we've got uh, your MOSFETs here. They are doubled, it's a 10 phase doubled. Inductors, as you'd expect, capacitors, which uh, they're keeping these cool, intentionally sort of almost actively cooled uh, because it does increase lifespan, longevity. And uh, then we've got the memory VRM in here as well. So, oh, and before getting to that stuff, there is a dip switch with a three BIOS switch. And the LN2 BIOS is, Gonna give you a little bit more room to play, but we don't know the exact details just yet. Uh, and then if you're wondering, this side of the card is debug stuff that will be gone on production model. This is EVBot, this is your volt reading, uh, re volt readout. And then this is a USB 2 connector. This USB 2 connector is actually really important. So this is the same pinout as on a motherboard. This allows you to do uh, voltage control through software rather than just relying on EVBot, for example. So if you're worried about voltage limitations on Pascal or something like that, that's supposed to help you out on, the, on that front of overclocking. But uh, I need to reference some data because we've got all of these component parts already, so we can go through those. Okay, so they're using international rectifier for pretty much everything. It's all IR components. The MOSFETs are IR35, right here, IR3575s. And then for uh, the controller, they've got an IR3570. Uh, for the voltage controller, where's that? We have IR3595, uh, so that's another international rectifier part, 3595 for the controller. 
voltage controller. And uh, PAX VDD, we've got an IR3899. And then we also have information on the doublers that will be in the article, uh, along with any other stuff that's missing here. We'll put all that in the article. Hopefully, we can get Buildzoid to analyze this PCB because it's quite interesting for a lot of reasons. But that gives you all the basics of the Kingpin card and a little bit more from the show floor of Computex, so to speak. Uh, so hopefully that gets everyone started. MSRP we don't yet have. Uh, so that's the whole rundown of the cane pin PCB and the cooling solution. We'll have more information in the article as stated. MSRP we don't yet know. We'll update as soon as we've got that. But the card is pretty good looking, especially with the gold plating on the PCB. Uh, so as always, subscribe for more. You can go to patreon.com slash gamersnext. It helps out directly. Thank you for watching. I'll see you all next time.